Welcome back to another episode of Real Rap Mini. It's Ruby, Volume 8, Chapter 11. This one is called Risk. And, well, it, it was surely an episode. Definitely an episode. It, it was for sure an episode. <laughs> like, hey, where do you want to start, bro? Where do I want to start? You want to you wanna try something new? You want to do a, what we like versus what we didn't like? Yeah, Save the time. All right. Yeah, let, let, let's 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 actually do that. That that's probably how everybody does their the reviews, and and we're just hey <sighs> re- recap followed by why it's dog shit. So let, let <sighs> let's try uh what we like versus what we didn't like. Right. Um, what I didn't like was almost everything. What I liked uh, is okay. Romero finally not fence sitting. All right. And I I also <laughs> I, I know no nobody probably liked this part, but I like Emerald, kind of like inserting herself into the role of hey new team member you know i can i can ruin that for you in one one easy sentence right now Go ahead. i can ruin that whole shit for you you remember zuko joining the team and yeah, i know <laughs> I, I, I see it already by the way like, I, I, oh. <laughs> at, what do you mean at the, at the end of the at the end of the volume it's going to be her and cinder having the uh, the the crossroads of oh Destiny talk. my god if she pulls zuko and fucking I don't know. This, okay. This is the if, it, of all time. if it happened, if it happens here, it makes more sense. I think it makes more sense than it does in Avatar. Well, yeah, because Zuko literally was told all the right things to do and picked wrong on purpose. Yep. Everybody's gonna keep up, keep bringing up trauma and Stockholm syndrome. No, he picked wrong on purpose. He he literally chose to not do the right thing. He was shown yeah, all we... the right paths. He was scolded. Iroh did nothing. But but be his rock, and what did he do? <sighs> Dude, that nigga under the bus. But <clears throat> uh, for Emerald, she has literally no ties to any of these people outside of none of them. Ex- faking being their friends in like volume two, that was it. And she fought them. Like she said, you know, you know, I whooped you a couple times, <clears throat> a lot of times, many many times. But you guys are pretty alright. Uh, oh, another I, thing I, I didn't was, like this. Was, was Ironwood literally pointing a gun at the back of Mero's head? So <laughs> okay, now all right, let's just talk about that Mero scene because I, I like that a lot. Let's just start there. All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, I don't. All right, I, what I like about it is that Mero is finally fucking. He's exerting his his will, what he actually thinks instead of just following orders, which has been built up for like a volume now, like an actual volume, damn near an entire volume now. Uh. And I, I thought the dialogue for that was really good. Him saying, you know, what what do you believe in? What do any of you believe in? And I think that's a good question to ask because what what the hell is happening? <laughs> you're gonna nuke Mantle, like like none of this makes you're gonna you're holding them hostage. But if you're holding them hostage, you're not actually going to do it. it it's it's a game of chicken. It's one big game of chicken. Do they believe that you're actually going to sack Mantle? For, for no reason. They should have no reason to think that he's going to do it, but because of the fact that he's literally going to do it, that's why they have to do it. He's winning that game of chicken, and and Meryl is like, this is, it's so unnecessary. It's so unnecessary to do this for, for no reason, because we're going to abandon them anyway if we do get access to the staff. So if we get access to the staff and we, we lift Alice into the stratosphere, Mansell's going to die anyway. Why speed up the process and nuke them? It's so unnecessary. So him asking, what, what do any of them believe in is good? Because Vine and Elm and, and Harriet, Harriet, she, something's wrong with that girl. Something is wrong with her. Nah, it, ha- Harriet is literally, like, I don't even, Harriet should have been Mero. She has no redeeming qualities at the, all. It should have been. Their faunus species should be switched. Because she she is nothing but loyal to the mission. She she should have been you know the dog because she's loyal to the mission. Ma- literally man's best friend. As soon as Clover went warpath, it's just she's been building up rage for this entire time for seemingly no reason, lashing out at literally everybody and everyone that she can except for Ironwood. And even then she's iffy on that guy. All right, I mean I guess not. She was surprised when she when he capped that guy, but. Everybody, I mean, everybody else. Everybody was because what's wrong with you, bro? That's the senator. 
Not the center no more. Just dead well, body he's now. dead. Come on. <laughs> Just a dead body now. Just another victim. Oh, my God. But, yeah. Fucking Harriet has a has a mean streak in her. Elm and Vine are just fence sitters and are just going with the flow. They'll they'll have an opinion on it later, I guess. And and Meryl's like, what's what's wrong with all of you? And he starts to walk away after saying, you know, I used to wear this rank with pride, but now it's just a collar. Starts to walk. You hear the gun caught. He hears the gun caught. Due process is out and ready to go. It's it's due or process. One of them is loaded up. And then once it comes in with the meanest haymaker to save his life ever, haymaker of all haymakers, oh puts that motherfucker on the floor. God. She said she saw him pull that gun out and she socked him as hard as she could. She has to sell it. She has to sell it that, you know, I'm sick of his insubordination and I'm definitely taking him to the brig. Absolutely. Definitely. I love at the end of that scene that. Elm knows it's wrong. She she knows that everything is wrong now. Like she 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 wants to be uh I guess you could say um true to the mission of you know keeping people safe. But at the same time it's just like bro come on. Your man is about to get smoked. I I know y'all y'all don't have any ties to to each other because it's easier to complete the mission or whatever. But your man was literally about to get capped by your boss. And she now felt that. Now they're scared. That's what it is. They're scared. Well, Harriet's now. not. Harriet's Harriet's face is the only. Well, I mean, Vine is is a, a docile character by nature, so his face really doesn't change. Yeah, but just Harriet just was stone faced. Elm was the only one. Like yo, <laughs> did y'all not just see him? Am I tripping? They all saw. I don't know what they're surprised about. They saw him pull the gun. But I guess now it's just like if I now I have a an actual reason as to why I can't switch side. Imagine if being I do, afraid of gonna... getting shot. Fucking super operative. It's not, bro. Even if he doesn't shoot me, he's just gonna beat me to death. You saw what he did to the war table. It's crazy that he has two metal arms now. Like it's just it's nuts to me. He's literally the Terminator now. He's more machine than he is man, and I guess that's. That's what they're trying to drive home with this whole storyline. Yep. Is that he's he's the T-800 now? Yep. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Anybody and anything can get clapped. <laughs> Will get clapped. Not can. What they did to Nora, man. Is that... She permanently that... had... They didn't even try to make it look cool. It's literally just these this orange fucking spider web all over her body. Scars aren't cool, dude. It's a... That's Cap. Defect, bro. You've seen enough fucking anime to know that scars are cool. Don't do that. Hey, uh, minor spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen. If you're not caught up on, I want to say the end of the Shibuya arc incident. If you're not caught up, hey, uh, just look, stop listening for like two, three seconds, four seconds. You didn't hear that name. Uh, yeah, thanks. Of course, that shit. Yuji having half his mouth blown off is raw, but that's. Did you just spoil me? No. <laughs> anyway, wait, wait. How? How? What was the last Juju chapter that you read? I don't fucking remember. You All don't right, well, care about spoilers. It doesn't matter. You probably spoiled them though. But hey, I'll put a spoiler warning. It's fine. No, you won't. All I right, Renora time What's... and how they you... fucking butchered this fucking scene. Did you like it? Oh, you didn't like it. Okay. No, I like, I like the scene. It. I just don't like them writing that right. John shit in there. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I like the scene. I don't like the their slapstick comedy. Like their their little like anime gag moments are, are not are not there. And they're I like John. They're not it's well just, placed. Yeah, I like John. It's just this this was not this is not you, it. you didn't need to do it. He literally can just get up and walk out of the room like a regular person as they start talking. Yeah, I'm trying once, to think once she says, um, as your t- as a teammate and a partner, that's John's cue to get up and walk out the room, not make it fucking awkward. Oh, water off the bridge, bro. <laughs> I like John, bro. Get out of here. Just leave. That's what Let's I'm go. saying. Like that, that, that's my guy. But look what y'all did. <sighs> Man, 
these are the messiest relationships I've ever seen in television. And I watch a lot of garbage television. What well, what I liked about this uh, confession discussion is that at the end of it, it wasn't like a clear rejection, denial, or like a. It was essentially a delayed yes, which feels a lot more real than like a, than than how most anime relationships are handled, which is either. All like right, like we, we've had this heart to heart and now we're together forever, unbreakable bonds. Yeah, or in Xenoblade, the the fucking in Xenoblade two, how uh, spoilers by the way. I yeah, how Nia um, <laughs> she confessed to Rex and then he was just like, yeah, I love I you, love you all. and everybody. <laughs> like, right, and she just like, <laughs> all right, man, whatever. When Nora's just like, you know, I need I need more time before I can, you know, I need to figure out myself and who I am before I can devote half of myself or you know, my entire person to you. This is a really weird character arc for Nora because nothing is happening for her at all. I, I am confused on what she means by figuring out who just Nora is because now the party got even bigger. Because they, they haven't even... What, what when are you he going figure, to... This is something that should have happened in way back, what was it, volume six? When that when the fucking election happened, or was it, was it seven? Seven. That's when you do that. You focus on that storyline then. This, yeah. This, this should literally be the, the peak of this finding out who Nora is. It feels... Not empty. It, it definitely feels mistimed, but I don't know where they can take that, because... I feel like there's not gonna have there's not gonna be deep much room die, for like a, for like a a, a Ren and Nora splitting up unless that's the plan for the next uh whatever they're going to do at the vault is have everybody split up and Ren and Nora just continually go on to separate teams over and over until the end of time or until she figures out something. That's dumb. I mean, I don't, I don't know what what they what she means by just Nora then. I don't know either, and I don't think they know because there's there's no time. I now think it's, but, it's just banter for the sake of adding angst or whatever. It I hope, I hope they have a, I hope they have a plan for that because I like that relationship. It's just their that ship dynamic is always fun. Fucking quiet person, and then I'm always on fifteen. Always, that's always always a good ship. <laughs> it's, it's the silent male versus he he asked for no pickles. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> uh, <yo. laughs> that fucking picture of Hov and, and Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> he asked for no pickles. Nah, it's good, bro. I, don't, I can just take them. Nah, I'm good, I'm good man. I can, I can take them. <laughs> she's already in the fucking. Come on, you, she's you in, don't gotta do she, this. She's in the kitchen with the burger already. <laughs> you don't gotta do this. I can just take it off. Uh, also, I'm glad that uh, she she brought up that little tidbit that back in I forgot the village name is Moshed. But whatever I'm village that, whatever, whatever you want to call it, when I, or wherever Ryan and Nora came from, that her mom was still there. It's just that when the grim attacked, she left. <laughs> so her ditching your kid because some fucking saber tooth pull up. Uh, no, there's some big ass birds too. You remember that big ass Nevermore that was on top of the house there under? That damn night pulled up and said, "Yo, it's game time." Oh yeah, knuckle off it. Hey, hey, what's that? <laughs> and they just started clapping. Oh. Oh, yeah, Prince I'm dad pulled up and got smoked out. He actually got. I mean, the the standard method of dealing with Grim is he's high tech weaponry, and this guy had standard bow and standard arrow. I don't even know if it's high tech weaponry. I mean, Ruby got this big ass size. Yeah, but what I mean, is no, no, no. actually made of? Like what? I don't know. Actually, I mean, because it's either regular ass swords and shields that can do this. Like what? Yeah, I mean, John. Added his sword plus his shield and then cut it. So probably not that advanced, but more advanced than whatever that guy was fucking rocking because he got smoked. <laughs> <sighs> yes. Yeah, scene. I like that scene. I like the running north scene. That was good. Ruby in this fucking episode is just who? Fuck Nora. Who is Ruby Rose, bro? I don't like. I don't like Ruby. I don't like Ruby at all. Who is Ruby Rose? Because I don't know. I don't know what who she is. She's such what? a departure from the, and I understand like you know, beacon falling changes you, but yes, even but then, like her character continues to shift and move. It's not even in the same character. Yeah, 
Like, I understand characters having a breakdown because that, that makes sense. You're supposed to... Everything has gone wrong. But before the breakdown, her character has been shifting and moving. Not the same. It hasn't been the same character. Yeah, even volume six. She, like, and I, what I mean by this is that what makes the the lower points of a character more more poignant is if the we get to see the stark difference between the high points and the low points. Like, let me get an example. Let me think of an example. Or no, I can just use her character. Like in volumes one, two, and three, she's always like, you know, goofy and silly and and fun and happy. And this is usually what people complain about with Yang, how you know, Yang doesn't make jokes anymore. And it's just like, all right, well, she actually has a reason to, to not lost her be arm. the same. Lost her, her arm. An asshole. Her mom is an asshole. <laughs> like, she's been through a lot. She's been through a lot. But Ruby, you know, usually she's the, you know, I, I smile in Death's face. She's in a field full of fucking grim by herself, no backup. And, you know, she's smiling and having fun and all that. But for the past, like, volume, back past two volumes, maybe even three, it's just been, you know, I'm serious, I'm serious, I'm serious. You know, it's, it's all, it's all uh, mission mode. And she doesn't, she's not as goofy, not as silly anymore. And this episode especially, I mean, I, I understand because what she said about her mom and how her mom has probably got turned into a grim. But... Which confirms Even, that there was no body, and I think I think we did say that about her probably being turned into one of these damn hoods. That's that's everybody's theory, but uh, this is super confirmation now. Uh, there is no body. Um, I mean, how did I mean if there's no body, how do they know she's dead? That's that's the whole deal. I I don't think there was a body, and if there was one, Taiyang just found some nigga he killed and put it in a fucking grave. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the most Taiyang uh... thing. <laughs> he just killed somebody, wrapped it up in a Hold sheet, on. and said, "Yeah." To lie to his kids. Oh yeah, this this, this is mom. She got put in a pack. Sorry, uh, that would be sick. But. Yeah, I don't know. Kaying. Bro, that guy's ass. They had they had a nice conversation. Um Ruby is I, I want her to like be happier, be goofier, because she's just not the same at all in the slightest. Uh I don't think I had any problems with, with what they were talking about. I mean optimism and hope is, is something you do need. Sure, they're in the, the most fucked situation ever, but Hey man, it is what it is. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. I don't, that that scene wasn't that. It was like everybody's hype, like oh, Ruby and Yang talk about their mom, and it's just like, bro, <laughs> their mom been dead for years. What do they have to talk about? Y'all should have talked about this a billion years ago. Either a this billion is a years conversation ago, conversation that should have been had a, a long ass time. Ago. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame them because it's on like the same team. Who wants to talk about our dead mom all the time? Like, come on, <laughs> come saying. on, guys. This is a talk they should have had long ago before this fucking silver eye man or silver eye faunus was turned into this damn monster. So, so you think that that when they confront Salem for for the fight, that that the damn or maybe wait a minute, maybe there was a body and Taya actually had to smoke her out. Oh, you mean he? She got turned, and then he did have to kill her. Yeah. Awesome. Ah, that might be it. I think that'd be interesting. They go back to him and and tell him about all the shit they found out, and he's just like, all right. "Yeah, by the way, <laughs> it's time to tell you girls the truth." <laughs> Hi, Young, it's actually father of the year. If that's it. I mean, either way, uh, either storyline of him just taking a body and putting it in that grave. <laughs> That's not what happened. <laughs> Damn it. Yo, Tai Yang is the greatest if he did that. Oh my god. Nah, I need that to be true. Fuck, fuck what everybody else is talking about. I need Tai Yang to be the biggest piece of shit possible. And then there's Emerald. <laughs> Um, is it? Are we just talking about Emerald as a whole? Or are we talking about the uh, okay? No, all right, 
Right. That speech that she gave, that I, I think, and you know, I don't want to accuse. Plagiarism. I mean, if I see, if I see it, I see, it's not plagiarism. If I see it, I see it. It's a reference. If anything, I'm not accusing them of plagiarism. But that little speech she gave, that that little speech she gave, was probably one for one as awkward as "Hey guys, Zuko here." Literally <laughs> as awkward. It's so awkward. What the yeah, fuck are yeah, you no, talking it, about? It's a hyper awkward. Like, I get what they're trying to do. It's trying to be familiar, but but it because you don't want her to to come on here and sound like uh you know you don't you like don't we, want her to her, her to give the damn uh Batman speech or some shit. Yeah, you know, the, over the, the top, super serious, galvanize the troop speech. Yeah, the fucking Captain America, Chris Evans. <laughs> right, <laughs> Captain America here. You might have heard a few things about me over the weeks. But our democracy is in danger. Like, all right. And you don't want her to come off as too Joe, like too friendly either. So it you, know, you got to have, awkward. it's got to be a little bit of trepidation there. Like, uh, well, guys, um, <clears throat> can't do it. <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I need to know. I, she needs to have like a, a, a talk with somebody. I know there's no room for that, but maybe she could talk to Ozpin and, and he like, they just talk about whatever she, she feels because right now i know it's like obvious that she's defecting through like you know the little subtle hints they gave us about her seeing the orphans underneath the shit but that means nothing to me. and if they flip it and they don't uh and if they don't like redeem slash change her fuck you guys because there's no reason for you not to do it she even said it herself that she defected and i know she can fucking lie but obviously I want to know for sure: is, is she defecting? Is she joining them? It, it, is she joining them? Me three volumes of her sitting in this fucking whale, fearing for her life. Like, is she joining them conditionally, only to save Mantle, so that none of the infants or you know poor people get smoked? Like, what is, what does she mean by switching sides? I, mean, I just I need to know. Well, I mean, you you just said it. It's literally conditional. And then after the fight, it'll be like, yo, uh, we have three people on a team and we need four, so what's up? No, they have they have two teams of four. Penny is not they on have, their fucking team. They have Ruby and they have... Uh, Penny is not on their fucking team. Oscar, John, Ren. <laughs> Hold on, there was somebody in the comments that, that dropped like team names. So I'm like, oh, it was a Team Arson or some shit like that? Awful oh, name. <laughs> No, that's for you're you're crazy. That's just no, fine. Awful as in it's fucked up. <laughs> well, let me see. Uh I know that was the team name for for Yang and them and the Hold on. Uh how the fuck are you arse? No, team team Alpine is uh what they're thinking for John Ren, Oscar, and Nora. I mean, I guess. And then yeah, team arson. If if Emerald joins that, the team of five, so it'd be arson for John Arc, uh, Lyran, uh, Oscar Pine. Well, Hayes would be after Emerald. Emerald's last name is Sustry, so that's where the S comes from. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know. I I think I think the fact that like I said last week, <laughs> Emerald has to get smoked because if she's a full time member of the team. Either they have to like, no, nah, they'll gun her. Her powers won't work as soon as she switches sides. You know, you know, you know. How she's not. Do. She's not. She's not the extra ranger, bro. It's not how this works. It's an anime, bro. Okay, first of all, don't do that. She's not the witch. So overpowered. She's not the white ranger, bro. Come on. Okay, first of all, that guy's literally overpowered. Come on, Trent. Yeah. <laughs> you saw. Okay, you saw what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Trent was so wrong. <laughs> you saw he was this, this uh, nigga wrote his name in the sky, bro. What are you talking about? That guy is so raw. <laughs> bro. Yo, Dino Thunder was so good. But back to the show. Um, I don't want to go over time. What didn't I like uh, about the, the dialogue? Oh, right, we forgot about we forgot about the jailbirds. I I didn't forget about it. Yeah, is that what's that? I, I skipped over it on purpose. Oh no, no, we're going back. 
Are you crazy? Fucking skipped over it. On I don't. Show. I don't like the way those two talk to each other at all. Because as far as far as Crow knows, the only thing he did, the only thing Ar- Ironwood did was tell uh, Clover to arrest him. Crow got Clover killed. Now you know you can do a deeper analysis to say that Clover because Crow so killed. Crow's so traumatized by Semlet and all the people he kills. You know he has to find somebody to blame, or he'll literally break down. So he's pinning the blame on Ironwood. And I think that's what Robin was implying by saying that you're only doing this shit for yourself. Uh, but uh, I know, and the viewers know, that shit was your fault. I mean, yeah, Tyrion did actually. No, that shit is literally Clover's fault. We have Tyrion in custody. It, you, you can arrest me when we fucking land and that guy is manhandled. Why are you arresting me on the fucking plane? Yeah, why, yeah, why are you standing you up? Why are you, di- why are you getting diesel with me? Now that you got diesel with me, now Robin's agitated. Now we're fighting. Now he's free, and now he killed the, the pilot, and now the, the plane's doing he a no crash. the plane. Great. We're all out of there. Rob, Robin's <laughs> unconscious and has a CTE. I'm going to go kill Tyrion, and you're in my way. Why? Why are you fighting? I'm literally going to kill this guy, and you're fighting me. Why? And then Crow somehow finds a way to blame Ironwood at the end of all this, and now he's going to kill him. Why? Why? He blames Ironwood because if he didn't give Clover the order, this would have never happened. Clover didn't have to go about it like that. Of course. <laughs> Ironwood, but... Ironwood gave the order, and it was Clover that fumbled the bag. Fam, if, if you think that anyone in this fucking show is sensible, what show have you been watching for all these years? My go Emerald is sens- er, sensible, bro. Come on. Don't do that. She's not sensible. She has a superpower to literally make you see some shit that doesn't exist. No no character is sensible. Anyways. No no character I, that has that superpower is sensible. Anyways, moving on from you with this slander. Uh, I don't like the way that Robin was talking about Crow. Or not Crow, about Clover. Now, Fuck Clover, <clears throat> idiot. I, I, talk, I talk crazy about the dead sometimes, right? When they deserve it. Ronald Reagan, I'm coming for you. But... She was talking some other mess that doesn't even makes no lick of sense whatsoever. She was saying the reason why you won and why Clover didn't is because you fight for you know what's right and he didn't. What? He's taking orders. Oh, it wasn't right, bro. What does that matter? How does that make you stronger? Like the dialogue was super off right there. Super off. Yeah. Like, none of that matters. And her, you bringing Clover up again to him? This guy that's unhinged. All right, cool. Yo, the, the funniest shit has got to be that stupid elevator scene where he's just screaming in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's right. She's right for that. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, Ro- Robin is just like, yo, are you, are you nuts? Crazy. You- I hate her weapon design, by the way. It's just a stupid little little shitty arm crossbow thing. It's all gray and shit, and no like. It, what what color, it, nigga? Our colors are fucking military vomit green and br- and brown and black. The I fuck? mean, I, I mean, I guess her her weapon has no swag when she herself has no swag. But I think ever since like volume four, weapon designs have gotten worse. Like, there's been no swag lately. Friggin', what's his name? Leo? Leo's weapon was so... Uh, you remember that thing? No. It was the same type of wrist attachment shit. Oh, was it a crossbow? Wow. Uh, not, a, not a crossbow. It was, like a, it was like, a, like a shield thing type, and he shot like dust out of it. It was, it was stupid. It, it, yeah, regardless, it was stupid. No, 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 just, no swag. None let's whatsoever. just leave it at that. Regardless, it's dumb. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, no, I don't like the way that, that, that Crow Robin talk went down. I don't but like then the, way, you know, the way that damn Ruby and Yang shit went down. Because it's just like, <laughs> she killed our mom. Yang half breaks down. Bro, what the fuck is going on in this fucking house? <sighs> Literally, what is going on in this fucking house? It's because she was thinking about it, too. She was thinking about it, too. You know, they mentioned... Okay, but it's oh. the way she broke down and then switched right back. Because she realized that she has to come for her sister. Okay, like I said, it, that switch up is is literally inhuman. It's vicious, but I mean, it happens sometimes. You got you got to shed a few thug tears and you know, right back to the grind. Like nothing happened. 
right. I mean, it's like the the motherfuckers that lost on the on the sneakers up today didn't get the university no blue. Shed a few thug tears. Get right back to it. Like none happened. Yeah, you get back on that stupid app after you won installed it five times because they robbed you five times. Like, just... You you better take your ass to StockX right now. Yes, yeah, so I can pay a thousand fucking dollars for it. Shut up. Yes, sir. If you really want him, you really want him. Hustlers don't sleep. Anyways, what's what's the last thing that we have? <laughs> Nothing. We're out of here. We talked about everything. Oh. Well. I mean, we 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 can very. I know it. There was the, the. No, no, not pen. Oh, I hated that little sequence. I don't want to talk about that. Unless yeah, you right. want to. Okay, fuck you, Penny. You want to talk you about it? I like that case. I don't know how to talk about it. This situation is All right, well, uh, Penny, Penny having the resolve to say, yo, you should just smoke me so that, you know, I don't open the vault. Beautiful and character. Have the power. Yeah, she's been consistent. Except for, you know, when they boosted her semblance and got rid of the virus. That is it. I don't was- know how that works. So does, like... Is, when is, John, is John upgrade? Semblance. Is that what he is? He's fucking. <laughs> when 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 John boosts auras, does that like cover like like if I have a cold and he boosts my aura, do I not have that cold anymore? That's what they pretty much just told you. Because I'm a, like the virus is a physical ailment, like would be the common cold, right? And he just got rid of it. Well, not got rid of it. He uh. No, he got he he, he subdued it. Yeah, he said, but, but but the idea was for for him to to boost her aura, and she would fight off fight it off, if not get rid of it. I yeah, don't know. that's not working. Yeah, y'all uh, y'all like doing weird shit with with the semblances, and I'm not with it. It is weird, but I'm glad we got a another white glyph, one of my favorites, black one. I like that one a lot. Damn gravity one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, she she now has two spells. Congratulations. We're getting cl- that much closer to time dilation being used again. Yeah, it's not happening. Now the real enemy. Everybody talks about time dilation, but <clears throat> what we really lost was her using the dust in her sword. That's what we really lost. Damn. She has... What what was it? Them lightsaber. Yeah. She. I'm pretty sure she had some disarming shit too. It was like green or whatever. That shit was hard. But uh, only other thing is that Cinder, Watson, and now Neo. Yeah, I are, forgot about them. They're uh, they're on their way to the vault too. Everybody's going to the vault. It's just like the end of last volume where everybody was in the same place, same yeah, time. Everybody's converging. We're 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 hitting the end point. What is it? We have like two episodes left. I probably something like that. If we do, that's gonna be a cluster fucking of an episode because there's like. Like fifteen people there. Dude called this episode super cringe. <laughs> I, think it's, I mean, I think it's it, it was pretty, pretty cringe. I hate using the fucking word because you, you internet, fucking <laughs> you internet niggas in all your fucking terms that you guys overuse in like a day. <laughs> cringe being one of like regular people words. You guys just beat into the fucking ground. <sighs> Not me though. Um, let's see. But yeah. Good episode. The I I I'll agree. The dialogue was iffy, but um, and the animation was iffy too. They're really good at like making realistic looking movements, but when it comes to like extraordinary tasks, it's it's too normal. It, it's too normal. They they try to shy away from it. Yeah, I need me some super exaggerated animation. Come on. But yeah, that's, they definitely need to start it. going up. That's all I have to say about this episode. It was, it was a good. Yeah, I, I thought I didn't like it, but I'm, I'm whatever on it now. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. It's more of an in between episode. Nothing really too much happened. Some bull jive. You can take this shit back. Mero, Mero, Mero. Yeah, that guy almost died. <laughs> Enough of that fucking guy. Mero, Mero. Oh yeah, we forgot to say in the elevator they met up with with Crow and Robin. We know it's them because. Who of else course. Would, would they be that's gonna be the about? that's gonna be the greatest team ever. Crow, Robin, Winter, Marrow. Oh Marrow my god! Dog shit. We, we know to... it's them because if it was literally anyone else, the the camera angle would have been from inside the uh, the elevator, looking out. Yeah, yeah. That's what they always do. They're about to go jump Ironwood next chapter. Ironwood <laughs> plus Ironwood plus the rest of the Aesops versus. Oh my god! If the Aesops fucking lose again, bro. 
They're going to. It's going to, Crow's going to take on Ironwood, and then those three are going to get put in a pack by Winner with one arm oh behind her back. God. That's going to be great. That's going to be great. Oh, Anyways, man. get us out of here. All right. Well, that's Real Rap Mini for this week. I want to thank you all for watching. As always, you ready to know, hit the comments, give us feedback. If there's anything you like, let us know. If there's things you hate, let us know. And uh, we'll see you next week. Y'all have a good night, day, afternoon, and Godspeed. Later.